So in Eric DaCosta's press conference the other day, there were a couple of things that I wanted him to speak on, which he did. Number one was Lamar Jackson's contract and the status of it. Number two was Hollywood Brown and his fifth year option. Uh, and number three was the status of John Harbaugh's contract extension, which he spoke very briefly on. Didn't really say too much about it, but he did touch on it a little bit. Um, but another thing, a bonus uh, that a lot of us got was from both him and John Harbaugh was when they both spoke of Marcus Peters. Um, and this is one of the last things that I wanted to touch on that occurred in both press conferences. Uh, when Harbaugh spoke on uh, Marcus Peters, he said that it's going to be nice to get two first round corners back. Uh, and we know that he wasn't speaking of Marlon Humphrey and Jimmy Smith because Jimmy Smith looks like he's headed uh, out the door. Um, into retirement. So he was obviously talking about one Marcus Peters. And then with Eric DaCosta, he spoke about Marcus Peters in the way that he spoke about Steve Smith Sr. and Quan Bolden uh, and some other guys that have just came to the Ravens and you felt like these dudes should have been here from a long time ago. Calais Campbell is another one of those guys that he talks about like that. And that has been the case with Marcus Peters. He has been such a perfect fit a perfect fit and not only his game on the field but his game off the field too the way he talks that that attitude that swagger that confidence that he plays with and, and exhibits he is just a, a perfect raven so i love when eric DeCostas basically said hey marcus peters ain't going nowhere now because this is where it gets really tricky and this is why a lot of ravens fans they were worried they were a little bit scared um, about Marcus Peters' status because it's not a good look when a cornerback is coming off of uh, an ACL tail, ACL Achilles injury, whatever it was. It's, it's not a good look, especially when they have a big cap hit coming up. Huge cap hit. And the Ravens, I believe, from cutting him, they could save $10 million on the cap. And you know Ravens' cap space is always tight. So they're going to look for ways that they can save and they can maneuver that cap to where they can have more of it, but at the same time, keep some guys around. And Ravens will have a couple of different options on what they can do with Marcus Peters and the way they can do it with him. So one of those options is releasing Marcus Peters. Now, when you release him, that would be a big risk because you could release him and you could do a handshake deal like, hey, we're just releasing you so we can get some cap space back but you'll be back. But if they do that, <laughs> they, they better act quick. They better act real fast because there will be plenty of other people who will be requesting Marcus Peters services if he ever even sniffed free agency. It would not take long. He has never gotten to be a free agent before. Um, so this that would be huge because remember, the, it was the Chiefs that drafted him. Then they traded him to the Rams. Then the Rams traded him to the Ravens. So he never got to be a free agent before. Um, so, you know, he would have people knocking at his door like crazy. Um, but th if the Ravens release him, they could do that. And then they could resign him uh, for a, a, a cheaper deal or a deal that's structured that really helps both parties out. Well, really helps them out because Marcus Peters, he, he going to be straight. Um, Another thing that they could do, they could just give him an extension. They could give him an extension. They could stretch out that cap space uh, over the next couple of years um, and lower his current cap hit because uh, that would help them out a lot as well. So Marcus Peters, he is in pretty good shape when it comes to uh, getting money from the Ravens. Now, one thing that I, I don't think that they can do, I really don't because this is where Marcus Peters has all the leverage in the world. I don't think they can ask him to take a pay cut. I don't. Because, again, the same way with Lamar Jackson. You knew their value when they played. You knew their value when they were on the field. But their value being off the field, their value when they didn't play, both Lamar Jackson and Marcus Peters, it shot up like crazy. Because you, you just saw how valuable those guys were when they weren't even playing. And it made you miss them even more because of their impact on the game, their impact on the team. And then even Marcus Peters, like, who knew that he was a defensive coordinator? Who knew? Now, I know one of my guys had brought out that um, 
Marcus Peters did a lot of the uh, the, the play calling when he did play. And a lot of telling uh, like Mar Marlon Humphrey what he needed to do, where he needed to be. A lot of telling the different corners where they needed to do and whatnot. And we saw that when he was over there calling plays uh, on the sideline. I was like, oh, okay, wow. That's probably the real reason why they, uh, why they were pushing Wink out the door. Because they said, oh, we got, a, we got a defensive coordinator right here in Marcus Peters. But anyway, um, they, they can't ask him to take a pay cut. Well, they can, but if he decides he wants to decline that, okay, no problem. Now, uh, with Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh, with them both uh, acknowledging that Marcus Peters is going to be back and he ain't going nowhere, that's cool and that's nice. But now let's see how the action follows. Because, again, like we talked about, the way that they answered a lot of the questions, everything sounded nice. Everything sounded great. Everything splendid. Awesome. But now it's about the action. Because you could have a good talk game. You could have a great talk game, as they both did. Both of those press conferences, they, they went pretty good. They went smoothly. They had all their answers ready. They knew it. They were like, boom, boom, boom. All right, what you got for me? But now it's about the actions. Now it's about the follow-up. Now let's see how you handle that Marcus Peters situation. Because you clearly need him. <laughs> you clearly need Marcus Peters. And Eric DaCosta even mentioned, hey, we want more turnovers. We want to be more disruptive as a defense. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Marcus Peters all day. And I saw some... Some say, oh, Ravens expected to be interested in J.C. Jackson. But that'd be nice. I would love it. And again, you can never have enough corners. That's what y'all know. And with Jimmy Smith leaving, with Anthony Averett leaving, uh, with those guys being on the outskirts of the Ravens, they're going to need more secondary help. Um, but I just I don't envision them getting J.C. Jackson. I would love it, but I don't see it happening. Um, but with Marcus Peters, uh, he just he brings so much to this team. He, he brings so much to the Ravens team. Um, and it would be very hard to replace that. Because, again, it's not just about the interceptions. Uh, it's about the swagger. It's about the confidence. It's about the attitude. It's about his talk game. Like You think Eric Acosta and John Harbaugh got a mean talk game? Listen to Marcus Peters. Listen to him mic'd up. Uh, it might not be so team. Keep it clean, though. And, and even in the presses, when he would do the presses for the Ravens, it was not so team keep it clean. This dude would be letting stuff fly left and right. I'm like, come on, MP Juice. Like, oh, we love you. Would you just keep it clean, man? But that's Marcus Peters in a nutshell. So we'll see exactly how the Ravens uh, address this, his situation uh, and his cap hit and his standings um, with the Ravens. Now, another thing that uh, Eric DaCosta touched on uh, in the press conference that I wanted to talk about briefly because I, I really felt it on a whole nother level. Um, when he talked about the Ravens, the, the cap room, their limited cap room. And he when he spoke about them just wanting to, they, they, he, they had a chance to pull the trigger on some trades. And again, we, we get frustrated when we, because we always hear about the almost trades. We always hear about them. We, and especially after the trade deadline, we, all, we always hear about the, oh, well, Ravens almost made this one. Oh, they could have made that, but they didn't. Oh, they almost. We always hear about that. But I did appreciate him addressing the why, at least for this year, why a lot of those trades didn't happen. And he said that he didn't want to mortgage the future. Um, he said that uh, he didn't want to have the possible dead, uh, dead cap money, the dead money on the cap, I mean, excuse me. Um, he said he didn't want to do that. So that's why they ended up not going through uh, with some of the deals that they could have made happen. Um, and basically what Eric DaCosta was saying was like, man, we were broke. We were broke. We, we ain't got we ain't have it. And boy, when, when he said that, I was like, "Ooh, Eric DaCosta, I, I felt that one, man. Because I surely have been there multiple times, a, a lot of times, to where it's like, dang, I just, I ain't got it. I, I ain't got no money. I'm broke. Uh, so when he, said, when he said that one, I was like, ooh, ooh, that one brought back a lot of memories, man. But it's all about, it's, that's life, man. It's a, it's a process, man. So I appreciated that. But anyway, um, 
that's that these were the last couple of things that I just wanted to touch on when it came to the press conference. Obviously, them picking up Hollywood's fifth year option uh, and them saying that they're going to keep Marcus Peters, that he ain't going nowhere. So, all right, Ravens, you better deliver on that one now. Um, so, again, let's just see how they follow through uh, with everything that they said uh, they're going to do because we still watching and waiting. Team, keep it clean. We out.